Yo, what up, my tubers? We're back for some more drafting of the Chromatic Cube. Uh, it turns out the um, Double Masters format is going to be releasing on Magic Online here in the next couple days, so probably going to end up doing some number of those as well, but for now we'll stick with this while it is good. Um, did a bunch of, I hate to say it, non-blue-red decks on stream today, and none of them felt as powerful or as good, honestly. Uh, we did like a, a decent red-black aggressive deck, we did like a green-white uh, token-y ramp deck, and they were fine, but um, I think they just really kind of uh, lacked in power compared to the, the decks that I have been drafting a lot. That being said, um, you know, I'll just go into this draft with an open mind. Maybe we take a pick one, pack one, anointed procession, have a little fun with that or something, a little token deck. Could be fun. I don't really see much in this pack anyways. I guess normally I would take, what, first pick, like, Sacred Foundry or Angrath or something. Let's see if we can do some fun things with tokens. Okay, and that worked out perfectly. We went first pick Procession, maybe second pick Divine Visitation. I guess we can try it. If this was the five mana Vivian, I think I would take it instead. Um... I think the five mana Vivian is quite good. The six mana one, I don't think is as good. Rexay, actually, you know what? I take that back. What I should be doing here is probably taking the Reclamation Sage and trying to wield the Divine Visitation. I think if you are going to go these creature-based decks, you really need the important creatures that uh, can give you a lot of value versus, say, the, the more powerful top-end game decks. Um, I mean, a braid would be my normal pick here, but we're gonna take the Rex Sage instead. I'd, if like if Divine Visitation doesn't wheel, that's that's just a terrible sign, you know. As we get a, an Angel of Sanctions here, could be pretty good. Mold Drifter's decent. Uh, Ugin, I guess, is okay. Does make tokens. Ugin's probably just a good catch-all card. Gonna be good in no matter you know what deck I end up running. So let's do that here instead. Three ultimatums in this pack. That's kind of funny. Um, God of Ketra. God Eternal Ketra is not terrible. Oh, you know what? We could probably take Courier's Briefcase here as well. A little ramp and token production. I think I like that instead. It's so important for these decks to get the early game. Um, because if you just try to match the, the bigger cards late game, uh, you just don't have the power level, so... I'm going to take the briefcase here over God Eternal. Chatterfang's not terrible. Ornithopter's okay. Micaeus is like, all right. Best pack, or best card here being Silumgar's Command. Ugh. It always pains me, you know? Like, we're taking <laughs> much weaker cards overall. But that's fine. We do it for the fun. Well, no, maybe not for the fun. We do it for a change of scenery. How about that? And I mean, these decks can be fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Often enough, you're going to be playing against other creature-based decks. Um, so if you can go wider or taller than other creature decks, you're usually going to be okay. Exo the top create, create two two when that team. So I wonder how this works with Ugin. I'm assuming one. Exo the top create like face down and look at it. Create a two two when that token leaves the battlefield. So this probably makes two two twos with Ugin, but only one of them gives you the card. Is what I'm guessing what happens. Although again, I'm not entirely sure. Really good pack here for us as we pick up a Tristani six pick. That's fantastic, obviously. Scattered Groves and Sparrow's Headquarters both really solid here as well. So with the Blink, that's fine. Exactly the type of card we're looking for. Another really solid pack here as well. Mothra's good, Sanctuary Warden, Hydra, and Explore. Um, I've been really happy with all of those cards. I mean, I haven't played them very much, but when they're played against me, they've been super annoying. But I, again, I kind of want to take the Explorer here just to, to accelerate beyond the norm. So let's do that. 
green white tokens. What does this one do again? Nayeth of the Dire Hunt. Not good enough. Could take a Shadow Spear here. Oh, could take a Cloud Blazer. Hmm. Maybe a Bant Flicker deck. A Bant Token Flicker deck is still on the table because that's a pretty late Cloud Blazer, eighth pick. So I'm down to take that. Nice pickup. And I mean, a lot of the cards that make tokens are cards that you want to be flickering anyways, right? Like flickering Tristani is great. Flickering Rexage is great. Flickering like a uh, Regal, um, Regal Caracal is great. That type of thing. Any creature that makes tokens when it ETBs, you know? So if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus that many squirrels are made instead. Okay. Yeah, Chatterfang can go off with Procession. Actually, Chatterfang with Procession is just really, really disgusting, isn't it? Oh, Cavalier of Thorns here doesn't look too bad on the wheel. Although, I don't, again, I don't want to take too many top-end cards as we get that Divine Visitation as well. There's nothing else in that pack anyway. Now I'm really glad I took that Explore. We have uh, four or five drops already. Maybe not, depending on if the Cloud Blazer actually makes the deck at the end, but... I will say, there aren't that many Wraths in this format. There's like Crux of Fate, Farewell, Burn Down the House, Meat Hook Massacre, um, and even then, Burn Down the House doesn't necessarily kill everything. And then you have some smaller burn spells like Deafening Clarion, Fast Furious. Uh, so, with not many Wraths in the format, if you just go wide like this, you're often going to have a good time. Ooh, I wonder if Risen Reef here is good too. Cavalier is also an elemental. I mean, Angel of Sanctions is quite good and it does make a token though. I could also take Fauna Shaman. Uh, I'll just take the Angel. Storm the Festival is also pretty good, especially with all of the five drops I just picked up, damn. Micaeus is a maybe. I mean, it's obviously really good with tokens, but I just don't think it's like a the card that we want standalone. Does we get the blink? No, maybe banner. Ah, that's close. That's really close. Pack number two now. Finale is okay. Join the dance is okay. Overgrown farmland and valorous stance. I'm going to take a little bit of fixing. We picked up a ton of playables in the first pack, and we have now two quad or sorry, two triple green cards and a couple of double white cards, so I think that makes sense. Join the dance is gonna wheel 99% of the time. The, the card that I'm really upset about losing potentially is like the Valorous Dance, so land there easy for me. Kitty Cat Maker or Adeline. Adeline comes down a turn sooner and can continuously make tokens, so. I think that's a slightly better pickup than uh, the Regal cat Kitty Cats. Sometimes you just win with a turn 3 Adeline anyways. Like by turn 5, you know, the opponent can usually put up some defenses, but... This is an all-star for sure as we pick up a Blade Splicer here. Very good. Jetmere's Garden would be nice. Elspeth would be okay. Uh, I'm going to take the Blade Splicer though and try to wield the, the Garden. I mean, we might not run blue, but we might still play the blink, if that makes sense. Angel of Invention now. Hmm. Yeah, look at all these five drops we're getting. Although Angel's just much better than Faberro Elder, I think. Plus, this is more likely to wheel. Okay. I really need to get the Mana Dorks, the, uh, the Paradise Druid, the... Incubation Druid, the Llanowar Elf. Kind of upset my, at myself now for not taking that Heraldric Banner. Maybe I'm just going to cut this Cavalier of Thorns instead. 
I don't want to take any more five or six drops. I really only want to take twos, threes, and maybe a couple more fours, you know? Let's see, are there any bricks with Storm the Festival? Just the uh, Explore and Blink, perhaps? History of Benalia now? Oh, maybe I need to take the Menagerie Curator here instead. Yeah, the curator seems a little bit too good. Whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature card in your library, draw a card. Uh, Okay, we have a lot of one-ofs. So that's a good thing for a menagerie. Okay, yeah, 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 that's great. Maybe we get lucky and wield the history of Benalia, but it's not a huge deal if it does um, not come back. Yeah, I mean, this looks fun enough. Oseju here is really nice, obviously. Just a free roll land spell is always good. Passing is a comma. Ah, uh, well, that's unfortunate. Oh, man, seventh pick magma opus. I'm internally screaming, even though I might have the outward appearance of uh, happiness. <laughs> Broking counterpart's pretty silly. Volo is actually kind of interesting. Huh. Over Giant Killer? Maybe we splash Volo too? Gonna need to find a little bit of fixing for that. Oh, we did wield a Valorous Stance. Join the Dance also wield. I mean, this, like, standalone, this card is just so weak. You compare this to so many other cards, you're like, what are you doing? But. No, no, no. We'll take the stance here. Passing a freaking Ral. Passing the best blue-red deck ever, as always. Because it's always open and it's always the best. Surveyor could be okay. Is it okay like flicker target? It's a construct, with I, which I doubt we have any of right now. Yeah. Finds our blue... Creature counts 10. I don't see us playing Piper. But maybe? Token production. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 ish, 8, 9. Not too bad on that front. Uh, I'll take the red-white land here in case we get, like, Jetmere or something. I don't think we want to run Giant Regrowth. So I guess we have three bricks for Storm the Festival. Blink, Stance, and Explore. But everything else is good. All right, pack number three. What do we get? Ren and seven, pretty nice. Karn's okay. Spellbinder's always great, again, for that interaction I was talking about, like with Rex Sage. Cavalier's also fine, but I don't think we take it. I think the Planeswalker's probably better, even though we really don't need another five drop, but do not it is certainly the strongest card there. There's the Farewell. Augur of Autumn looks pretty juicy. So does Emergent Sequence. Uh, this doesn't ramp us. But it does let us do some pretty good things, potentially. Augur versus Emergent. Hmm. I don't know what I'm supposed to take here. I think I like the ramp a little bit more, but that could be wrong for sure. Timeless Witness looks pretty good here versus Brutal Cathar. Okay. Another just good value card. Starnheim Unleashed. Oh no, I'm going to take the Druid here. 
Starheim's all right, but we have enough big stuff. Again, I think the the ramp cards are too important, and now we're re looking really solid on them. We have, let's see, Sequence, Explore, Druid, Curator, and Briefcase that can all go from two to four. Maybe I don't need this momentary blink. We're left with one, two, three cards that are bricks for the Storm the Festival, but that's okay. Mm, Skittering Surveyor could probably be cut here at this point. So we pick up a Ogla or... Oh, Rafine's Tower is very good. Could splash the Soul Herder too. Like I said, there's just so much overlap between like the token deck and the uh, flicker deck. Um, well, I guess we take Torrens instead. Oh, that's probably just better. 13 creatures. Yeah, that makes sense. The Dryad of the Elysian Grove could be okay. There's a Raise the Alarm here if we want that. I guess that's probably correct. I'm not going to take the Irrigated. We might be cutting the Volo. Ooh, Vizier of the Menagerie is nice. Well, so is Springbloom Druid for the ramp. So is the Touch of the Spirit Realm. Creature counts at 11 right now. I guess my creature count's not that high for Menagerie. Yeah, this is a way to go from 3 to 5. I like taking Druid. Hollowed Respite. No. Scuttlemutt Bankbuster. Probably not. I'm surprised I took so few fixers, but I guess we probably don't need that many if we're just straight up green white. Do we wheel anything good here? Cavalier. Sisse. What does Sisse grab? Ugin, Tristani, Ren. Adeline, Chatterfang. Torrens. I don't think we're running that, though. I don't think we're running any of those cards. Yeah, I don't need any more fives. And copying Tulsimir doesn't really do anything, right? It's a legendary. Aura. I'm short like one playable maybe. If we get lucky we wheel like the Thraven Inspector which does make a token. Otherwise I can just throw in that Skittering Surveyor. Odd green is a little bit of a stretch it feels like but it is a pretty funny card. Hmm. This is more white blue fixing. Alright, last few pickups there didn't really give us anything good. So I'm gonna have to find like one more playable. One that I'm not too thrilled by, it feels like. I just don't think the fixing's there. I guess we could try out the growth for the YOLO, but maybe we just run the Skittering Surveyor. Is this even good, is the question. One, two, three, four bricks for Storm the Festival. That's a little bit unfortunate, but I don't think we cut any of those. Well, I guess I don't need Raise the Alarm. Yeah. Maybe I cut the Raise the Alarm. You know what? I'm going to run the Volo, and I'm going to run the Skittering Surveyor. What the hell? We'll run the tower for a white blue source. Farmland, Boseju. Let's run one island. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That gives me nine white sources. That might even be too many. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. That gives me seven, eight. Oh yeah, I need to shave a white for a green here. Don't have any other lands, do I? No, 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 no. Okay. So nine green, six, seven, eight white. Some mana dorks and other fixing. All right, we'll give this a shot. Not as good as any blue red deck, but you know what? It's a change of pace. So don't tell me I never did anything for you, even if I didn't. <laughs> Okay, on to round one of this chromatic cube. We do have a ramp on turn two, so I guess this is good enough to keep. Probably even going to Timeless Witness back the sequence on turn three, assuming they don't kill my land. I'm going to grab another white source here instead of uh, blue. Alright, if we can find one more land next turn, we're going to be in really good shape. Damn, no land. Um... Okay, I guess I guess I'll attack for four and go ahead and grab the blue source now. Hope they don't have a way to kill lands, or a way to kill creatures rather. So we would really like to resolve Ren and Seven next turn to start getting extra lands. Bellbinder, interesting. Okay. Well, I'll take a look at my wares, because I've got a lot. Yep, I took the Ren. Good choice. Nice. Did find the lands. I'm gonna go ahead and just slam the Ugin here. Kill their Spellbinder right up. And smash. Keep the board clear. If they have a removal spell for Ugin, that's probably gonna tap out some of their mana. If they don't, great. Then Ugin lives another turn. And we can go Divine Visitation here into starting to make 4 fours with Ugin. It's a good hit too, but yeah, we'd rather do this first. Activate Golos, maybe? Nice, love it. Cast out! Aw, and a... And a uh, suspicious stowaway. Well, they know I have Angel of Sanctions, so it's not even like cast out's all that great. Sure. And I mean, we're still making a bunch of 4 fours. We probably want to deal with the Golos, though. So I'm guessing I should Angel of Sanctions it, most likely. And then I don't mind trading my island for their stowaway, if they want. We don't even have our Volo in hand anyways, and that stops them from digging one card deeper. Ass? Do you have double blue available? Okay. Uh, what does that do? 
nothing, right? We just kill that. And smash. I mean, this is fine and all. Just creatures. <laughs> Go creatures. <laughs> See what's more fun? Doing that or casting double vision and then doubling like a fight with fire. After having a long grindy game where you have to stabilize. I don't know. Who knows? I'm just a salty old man who wants to play blue red spells. Nothing wrong with that, okay? Leave me alone. GG, go next. Mm, very nice looking hand here on the play. I will say, uh, will say every once in a while it is nice to play a little ramp style deck or creature based deck and just, you know, beat down. As we are on mono green here currently, but Spring Bloom Druid next turn. Gonna give us some white sources. As they have an emergent sequence, they're blue, green, red, okay. Let's go ahead and druid. I'm gonna grab white and blue. Ooh, the flame painter. That card can be really scary. They don't have anything worthy in their graveyard yet. I don't want to just slam this storm the festival, honestly. Yeah, let's do it. Angel, and I guess we want land more than briefcase. Wasn't the best hit, but... Yeah, we're already pretty close to just... Kicking the, uh, or flashing back the storm of the festival, too. Well, they're gonna duplicate their mountain. Awesome. Love it. They need more lands. That's funny. Uh, so let's go Ren here. Try to find a couple more lands. We hit zero... We hit zero lands. Holy crap. Wow. That's freaking impressive. We did get a little bit, bit of value since we milled the Timeless Witness, but that's kind of insane. Uh, wait, they don't have any white sources yet. So I'm going to put forest and... Wait. Actually, I feel like they need the lands. No, we'll just put the Banishing Slash by itself. They can take the Sisse and the Forest if they want to. We don't care about those. Sure. So I can witness back a bunch of decent cards, but let's uptick again. Give us some more options. Get back Visitation or Tristani now if we wanted to. I have access to six, seven, eight mana. Probably just want to get another Planeswalker online. Oh, I can kill their other mountain too. Actually, you know what? I kind of like doing that. Ugin into Stone Rain seems good. Be gone, interloper. And then I'm not going to attack, so we can block to protect our Ugin. Sure, that's fine. Okay. I'm okay.
okay with him killing Ugin. Sure, that's fine. I'm not going to block. I'd rather have the Druid for mana. Here we go. Here we go. And notably, Procession works with Timeless Witness. So I'm going to pass now and plan on leveling up my Incubation Druid and then next turn we can just kind of explode. I do have to be a little bit careful about milling myself too much. Triska Decophile, what the heck is that doing in this? What? <laughs> yeah, they're like some five color soup. Actually, we played against another five color deck before this, didn't we? Maybe they're going to duplicate their bouncer this turn? Sure. Yep, that's fine. They don't have a good attack. I can block with the druid and then level it up as well to turn it into a 3-5 on blocks. Okay, let's get poppin'. Let's get big poppin', huh? like an overrun in this deck. Oh, did I choose the wrong mode? I didn't I didn't think it mattered which mode I chose. But maybe I'm supposed to choose a different mode next time. I'm assuming it doesn't matter here. Doesn't matter which mode I choose. I should get the same number of creatures both times, right? Maybe it does matter. If I click on the squirrel one, then I think they both go off. That's interesting. I'll have to test that out because I'm not sure how that replacement thing is works. Uh, this hand's pretty bad. We're going to go to six. We don't do anything until turn four at the earliest. This hand's also really bad, but if we can draw a white source for turn three Adeline, maybe that's good enough. Not great. Okay, that's good. Uh oh, Steam Vents turn one. Opponent knows what they're doing. <laughs> Named blue with it. Let's go, Curator. This is one man of any color, right? Yeah. I imagine we probably have overlap with Human Knight, so I'm guessing that the Adeline's probably not going to draw me a card, but... Oh? Could Volo here instead. 
Eh, maybe they have some counter or burn. We don't really care if the Volo dies. I just wanted to use my mana most efficiently. Sure. If I draw another white source next turn, I can play Adeline and hold it Valorous Stance. Okay, well, that sucks. Better find a white source next turn. Otherwise, we are probably dead. Hmm. Turns out not playing Adeline might bite me in the butt. They wouldn't have been able to electrolyze. Or Ral outburst it. Ah. This might have been a sequencing error on my part. Again, if I had played Adeline instead of Volo, they might not have been able to do anything. Oh, maybe they had Supreme Will open as well. I guess maybe they would have countered the Adeline, depending on. So they can play creatures off the top of their deck. They played out the Smashing as a land, too. Kind of scary. What you doing over there? Find some prisoners. All right. And they took an Ugin. And Ugin is going to kill Adeline. So I guess I Valorous Stance. Ay ay ay. Well, I mean maybe they uptick, but. I just have too many blockers as well. Yeah, it's not good enough. I mean, they could tri triple block Adeline here. But the token is also attacking Ugin, so... Oh, they're just gonna let Ugin die? Oh. That seems very strange not to chump with two tokens. We'll take it though. Scholar into plenty of choices. Looks like they're gonna outburst something. Sure. Wait, what? Very confused. I'm very confused, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Still can't win this game. I mean, hmm. This is really awkward, though, because if they do draw a way to kill my angel, they get back their scholar, so. This is not like, this is wishful, for sure. We need to get lucky here, but Angel was a good start to getting lucky, perhaps. Now remember, they can cast instants, sorceries, sorry. Instants, planeswalkers, and creatures from the top of their library. Is this Mythos or something? 
Fight with fire. Yeah, it's good enough. All right, GG's. We'll scoop it up there. They can also cast their key to the archive once their uh, scholar comes back. It's kind of awesome. So I don't think we're going to be beating that one no matter what. Even if I had went Curator into Adeline, I think that turn they were holding up the Supreme Will instead. So they go Supreme Will, Adeline. They still fire off the uh, Ral's Outburst on Curator. Okay, we're on the play here. Needs to find some lands, but we have turn to explore. So hopefully this works out. Yeah, this hand just wants to draw like three lands in a row. Nice. Land, please? Okay, phew, one more please. Well, two more actually, but yeah. So we're probably going to just lead with uh, Torrens here. And that way anytime I cast a creature we'll start making extra tokens and then Chatterfang will start triggering as well afterwards. What you doing over there? Hello? Uh oh, you're gonna time out. You're gonna time out, no! They might just be actually disconnected. I'm going to lead with Menagerie since we drew that. Doesn't uh, cast Planeswalkers, but... Oh, actually, Chatterfang's a human... Or, a, rather, a Squirrel Warrior. I probably have a bunch of Warriors in this deck. Man. I wonder how bad Curator actually is, then. How many things trigger it? We do have multiple angels as well, but... Looks like they just DC'd. That sucks. Yeah. Well, this is one way that a uh, deck like this can win. Not the preferred way, I suppose. Oh well, good beats. Good find land. Not much to say here. Not much to say here at all. It's not how we wanted to win. We would like to win, but, uh, yeah. Anyway. Surprise it actually takes this long for the thing to time out, though. Well. I should have probably just paused the video, but now we're stuck here together, so... Fast forward if you don't want to see this. Uh, good beats. Look at this extreme amount of skill. I apologize to the opponent who clearly disconnected or whatever. And we will just move on to the next game. GG, go next. Alright, after... A disconnect. We are on to the next game. Yikes. Where we gotta ship it down to six. And that is a much better looking six. 
Uh, I'm gonna lose the timeless witness here, I think. Actually, no, I'll pitch the Valorous Dance. Or the creature deck. We don't need removal. But it also looks like it took the mulligan. Will the curator, like, uh, glow if I'm about to cast a creature that draws me a card? Certainly hope it does. Hey, good draw. Alright, turn three Volo. Human citizen, human wizard. This is a dryad, so... Yeah, it's awkward that Tristani is legendary, but what will happen here is we get a bunch of tokens. And I imagine this is my only Dryad in the deck, so Curator probably draws a card here, too. My opponent pitched a Ketra with Fauna Shaman and grabbed a Springbloom Druid. Nice. And we want to actually keep the... Uh, the token, because we can Timeless Witness... Um, back the original if we want to. It's kind of funny. I mean, this leaves the Tristani more susceptible to bounce, but that has more utility in our graveyard, you know? This is a ton of pressure already. If you couldn't tell. Bad. Squirrel Warrior. Trigger, trigger. Not bad. Again, put the uh, actual card in the graveyard. And we get to swing with everything here. I don't care if they double block the Volo anymore. It's already done its job. Well, you better do something fantastic, my friend, because... Oof. Big oofs abound. This card's Luminous Broodmoth. I'm assuming that's game over. I don't think there's any creature that can save them at this point. Ho! Oh! That would have been very good. <laughs> oh wait, Chatterfang would still kill them. Forest walk and it would maintain 2-2. Two, two. Sorry OP, I ain't gonna cut it. You tried, you died. Like I said, if our dumb creature deck plays against other dumb creature decks, we can win. It's when we run into the uh, scary spells deck. That's going to give us the biggest problem. Alright, four and one now, I believe, with a little asterisk, because one of the rounds was a bye, but... We will do what we do until we cannot do no more. I think that's a very famous quote from a very famous person, important person, rather. Namely me. Super important. Golden God Drafter, as they say. <clears throat> yes, quite. Okay, game number, what, six? Four and one? So, game six. On the play. Yes, that's fine. We have turn two, explore. Turn three, Adeline. Hopefully Explorer can give us some extra value beyond just the lands we have. Good. I'll take it. Ooh. Please don't have removal. Please no Vanishing Versus. 
Because if we get to a procession into attacking with Adeline, that's going to be pretty juicy. Oh, well, good news. I've got Rex Sage. Ooh, Chariot. Ugh. Chariot is disgusting. Mm. Hmm. Could Sanctions the Chariot, but I think I'm going to get the Procession online. And then attack with the Adeline. And if they want to trade their Chariot for Adeline, I'm okay with that. Hello. Priority's being held because I could crew the chariot, but... Hello? Trust me, saying your go to people makes them play faster. <laughs> okay, did we... I was going to say, do we seriously get another disconnect again? Yep, I'm okay with this trade. Cherry is a really scary card. And even though Adeline's really nice, uh, I'd rather have their Chariot off the board. Plus, we re maintained keeping our 1-1s, so... Carry added, yeah. Well, well, well. It isn't Daddy Ugin. Yeah, so that's exactly what I thought would happen. So one of the cards, the first initial one, gets the card that you exile, and then you simply just make another 2-2. Ooh, Golos. It's a fun one. Let's see if they have Field of the Dead. They do not. Sad. Wow, jeez. I'm pretty sure we just need to get rid of the... Uh, get rid of the Golos, though. So let's go ahead and just Angel it. And smack in. And I'll go ahead and attack with all the 1-1s as well. Because if they block a 1-1, they're still taking a bunch of damage, so... Hey, that's pretty good. You can do some stuff there. Oh, this one's a kitty cat too. They have a bunch of lifelinkers now. Alright, so we'll have Ugin shoot the, uh, the Regal. And then just play Tristani and assume a scoops in our future. Their future. <laughs> play a creature attack. Play a creature attack. Play a creature relevant card and attack. Five, one. On to game number seven. This is a sad keep. Hope to draw one of our ramps cards on turn two. Or by turn two, I should say. take any of them. Damn. Never lucky. We'll 
probably just go with Splicer next turn, since we already have a fourth land, technically. Oh, well. Yeah, don't need to, uh... Skittering Surveyor, for sure. Skittering will be useful if and when we draw Volo for the fixing, of course, but... I mean, I guess if I have nothing else to do next turn. No point not playing it out. They are in colors that scare us. We need to apply pressure before they do something nasty. I would consider Rutha a nasty card. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little chump check here. They didn't buy it. So surveyor, grab an island, play the island. Oh, sure. A little bit of punish here. No big deal, though. Ral! Very nice. Yeah, Ral's really freaking good. So, you can get burnt out of nowhere with Ral, and especially with Ral and Rutha. Is it better to Ren in 7 here? Make a token? I could just Angelus Sanctions the Ral right now. I don't think slamming Divine Visitation does anything for us, sadly. Yeah, we should probably just eat the uh, Ral. What I expected. That's why it's called a theory. You know what? Divine Visitation is not a combo with uh, Eternal or whatever Embalm cards. Because if I embalm the Angel of Sanctions when I have Divine Visitation, I don't get the Angel of Sanctions. I get just a random 4-4. Four, four. Okay, kill the Ral. Sorry, kill the Angel, get back Ral. They can play something for 4 or less for free. We are very happy to see something like that. Alright, so it... I mean, I guess we just land Angel of Sanctions token the Ral next turn. But, I mean, any time they draw an instant of sorcery, especially cheap one, they're likely to be able to do stuff. <laughs> I'm shocked to discover I lost. Yeah, this is really bad. We need to get our synergies going, but we also need to make sure that we keep them in check. Ugh, a double big score is nasty. This is a draw four, make four treasure. It is a lot of mana. A block. You think I care about those? You're wrong! <laughs> Alright, they're gonna play out the Rutha using two of the treasure. I think I'm gonna uptick here, because we have a lot of graveyard value could hit as well. Yeah, nice. Hit a timeless witness, which wasn't bad. Also keeps Ren and Seven more alive from a uh, burn spell, but all right, I'm gonna go ahead and block like this, and if they can finish off my angel with like a royal eruption, so be it. Now, Ral can ping Planeswalkers, too. This is great. That thing. Snap. 
Well, they like what they saw. It's in our graveyard. Not much. Well, let's see if we can hit something good in our graveyard. Drew two, find an angel, and yikes, not great. Might as well just take away one of their treasures, because it doesn't look like they have much going on otherwise. I'm going to plan on cycling the Rafine's Tower here. Pretty good. Alright, so I guess they just kill Ren and Seven. And fear are the yeah. So Ugin is left at one loyalty right now. And they don't have anything in their hand, it looks like. Okay. Well, maybe we can this is this is our opportunity, our window. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. I mean I definitely need to attack and kill. One of their planeswalkers. And then... Do we want to timeless any of those things back? Oh, I guess... You know what I should have done? I should have timeless back my... Yeah, this is a mistake on my part. I should have timeless back my... Uh, Valorous stance and killed Rutha. Whoops. Yeah, I messed up. So I threw away my Rex Sage. Oh well. This is a lot more doable now. Uh, here we go. There's a storm coming your way. Do you have a fight with fire or something? We're just dead. Ooh, that's a good one too. Prismari command, so they're gonna shoot my 4-4 four, four twice, and they're going to loot twice for two each time. And try to find that one relevant spell. They only get to keep one card in their hand. But obviously this is still really good for them. Uh, oh, you know what? Ooh, Adeline attacking with Divine... So Adeline into with Divine Visitation means I attack as a 4-4 immediately. They discarded counter and a copy card. Have to drag in. Okay, this is not bad, actually. 7, 8, 9, 10 mana. So we can go... Chatterfang, draw a card with Curator. I guess it doesn't matter how I tap. Visitation. Adeline. Oh. Right, I messed up. Well, hopefully they just scry two this turn. For some reason I thought chatter... Yeah, yeah, so I needed to have an attacked with a curator to got the token. Okay. Well, not great, but... As long as the Ral dies next turn, we'll be okay. That was a punt on my part. Did they draw a counter? They must have had it drawn a counter. Jeez. What happens if we send everything at... Yeah, we need to send everything here. Well, 
one or more tokens will be created under your control to apply next. Okay. They should all be attacking here. That's good. Yep. Perfect. So they get to eat the Chatter Fang, but we get to make sure that Ral's dead, and then next turn we have two untapped 4-4s. Four Alright, let's see. We're still in range if they draw a big burn spell, though. Jeez, how many lands do I have? Holy crap. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14. Hmm. Not many cards left in our deck. Yep. I guess technically I didn't even need to attack with the chatter thing, did I? No, I didn't. I threw away Chatterfang for no reason. Nice. Well, they bricked. Okay. Are they dead with that attack? Find out. Probably just should kill that. Put him to two. Oh, I missed lethal. Ah, uh, wait. No, I didn't. They would have been to one. I don't have that good double copy. They would. It would have done one extra damage, right? It would have turned into a four four. Adeline would have dealt one extra damage. Okay. I did miss lethal by throwing away Chatterfang, but I didn't miss lethal by not upticking on the Ugin. They still have outs. There are a lot of cards in red that can burn me out. They've already used Electro Dominance, right? But they could have. Expansion Explosion, they could have the Fight with Fire, they could have, um, I think there's another one. Cut the Ribbons, technically, with all the treasure, yeah. Don't be salty. If you're dead, you're dead. Ah. Well, I'm either getting extremely slow rolled and I'm about to die, or... They bricked and they are mad. Oh, sorry, what I meant is... They went through a tunnel, they lost connection. We give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> ah, they hit the, one of the last lands off of me. <laughs> uh, okay. So, I almost threw there, but thankfully did not end up biting me in the butt, throwing away the chatter thing. Six and one now. A little spew, a little pew. On to game eight. Good looking hand on the draw. We have some double ramp here to get us back from uh, being on the draw. And actually, you know what? Because I drew... I guess never mind. Yeah, we're going to lead with Volo first. Although they're playing red-black, so I don't expect Volo lives very long. Actually, hmm. Now I think I instead Rex Sage here and just deal with the Fable. I probably want to wait on Volo until I can also hold up Valorous Stance to protect it. Because red-black is going to have access to a lot of removal. Okay, now we just Valorous Stance that right now. Easy enough.
Oh no! Dang it, now they get to take my Volo and I have no action left. Oh, non-creature! Hey! I lied, we're great. We're awesome. <laughs> Yay! Wait. They're both... Wait, what? Human wizard, elf druid. Why didn't I get an extra one? Am I crazy? Whenever you can, if that doesn't share, you control a creature card. Oh, in your graveyard! We have Elf Shaman in our graveyard already. Alright, fine. We don't want Rahilda to hit us. Okay, we need to top deck some... How about Storm the Festivals? Interesting. So they're going to chump with one of their creatures this turn? Jeez Louise. Or they have... Oh, they have a Bolt. Oh no, okay. Ooh, Field of the Dead. They're pretty far away from that, though. Yogmoth, That's nasty. Rankle is also nasty. Storm of the Festival has to be, like, our best draw, right? They discarded Yogmoth? What on earth? What is going on? Dude, I'm actually one man away from drawing cards with a Courier's Briefcase. That's nuts. Oh! Well, that is unfortunate. GG's. Oh no! The next card! <laughs> Alright. Good game. Yeah, we bricked out pretty hard there. We only drew like one relevant card that entire time. I guess Volo might actually suck in this deck, doesn't it? You know what? I'm going to cut Volo and I'm going to add Unnatural Growth. Just for one game. That means we can cut out all that other junk too. So add, add, add. This is the finals anyways. We're 6-2. and two. Might as well have a little fun. Win or lose. That's all I got. It wasn't red-blue. I will say this draft probably went faster than a lot of the red-blue decks. But it's all fun and games. All just fun and games. Alright, oh, that took a while to find the last match, oddly. In any case, we are on the play. Hey, we have the unnatural growth. Let's go! Turn one, forest. Turn two, curator. Hope they can't kill it. No, I said hope they can't kill it. Rude. Hmm. Explore only makes sense if we knew we were going to draw a land the next couple turns. I don't really care if they kill Chatterfang here. Okay, we'll probably trade with that. They get four bolts in their deck. We did find a land. Oh, of course we drew a bunch of planes when we need to draw freaking forests for this. But we don't want to be drawing lands right now, really. Oh, that kind of sucks too. Okay. Hmm. 
There's one. Oh, you know what we could have done? We could have let them... I mean, that doesn't make much sense, but let them get a couple creatures off of Robber of the Rich and then place Trastani and gain them all back. That would have been pretty funny. That's fine. Man, order. Order. Ugh. Of course, we go Tristani into Divine Visitation and not vice versa. I have to imagine that red-white aggro is probably a matchup that we want, though. But we do need to draw, like, I could just brick out, draw some lands, draw some irrelevant creatures. Okay, that's kind of unfortunate. Suppose I'm supposed to double block the robber here. They get a treasure, which we can blow up if we want to. That's okay. Well, we can even blow up the skittering surveyor now instead if we want. Oh, green. Interesting. Hey, that had to be one of the best draws. Perfect. These had to be some of the worst hits, my god. What? They just sacred fire my druid. <laughs> I mean, we lost a lot of junk, so I guess I shouldn't complain that much, but crazy bad draws. Hey, once again, another one of the best possible draws. All right. Man, the swings. <laughs> yes, I would like to make a two angels, please. Thank you. Oh, are they... They're just dead next turn if they just fully pump this and pass. Right? Yeah, I just take this. I... Take this. I go to one... Hope that they don't have one random burn spell for one mana, and then unnatural growth wins. 12 times 2, baby. Let's go. Let's go! Did it work? We did it! Yay! <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I enjoyed that, but I did not enjoy it anywhere near as much as casting blue-red spells that do stuff. But hey, we got to seven wins. One of them was a free roll since our opponent disconnected, but there you go. Nice little green-white token-y deck from this Chromatic Cube. As I mentioned earlier, I believe Double Masters is going to be online uh, on MTGO soon, so we'll probably uh, be uploading some of those, but... Expect some more Chromatic Cube as well in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, everybody. Hit that like and subscribe button. Appreciate you all tuning in, and we'll see you back tomorrow. Peace out.